Okay, welcome back to another video by Firestarter Graphics and Engineering. Today we're going to continue the analysis of our rocket in CFD. Now, why would we choose CFD? Well, a lot of times we can't afford a big fancy, us amateurs can't big afford, wow, us amateurs cannot afford a big fancy wind tunnel. There we go. So this is basically just a virtual wind tunnel. Now, I love wind tunnels. I've used them before, and they produce excellent data. Even if the only data I ever got from a wind tunnel was the actual drag coefficient, I can trust that that drag coefficient was the real drag coefficient for that object, and then I can calculate everything else off of that. So, but I don't have a wind tunnel at home, so this is as best as I can get. Now... I could make a wind tunnel, but then you run into other issues and everything and and whatnot. And to get a wind tunnel that can hold a one meter rocket, that would be awesome, but really, really, really expensive. So we're just going to use CFD in Onzel to be our virtual wind tunnel. Okay, so first things first, we actually need to build the wind tunnel. So we're going to drop in a cube. We're going to click on that cube. Remember, sorry, I did not tell you, but we are in the part workbench not part design we are in the part workbench so we're going to drop in a cube primitive and then we're going to go down in the property view um, actually it's just data view of the cube and we're going to say the length general rule of thumb is you want to make the cube five times bigger than the rocket but for today we're just going to do let's see I want to do four thousand for that, I want to do 2,000 and 2,000. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to click on the cube and I'm going to go to edit. Nope, I'm not. I'm going to go to view, toggle transparency. That way I can see inside of it. Now I'm going to click on the rocket and we're going to go to placement, position, front view. X is the red line right here, and I'm going to place this 1500 millimeters, and then 1000, and then 1000. So everything is just in the center. Now you could move it back just a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, so now we have our mostly our wind tunnel. Now, some people what they do is they will take the cube and the rocket and then do a cut. Okay? And then inside is left of just the cut of the actual rocket. Now you can do that, but I tend to find if I need to have the specific model to use later on or if something goes wrong, I don't have the 3D model. Yeah, it's inside of the cut, but I'd rather deal with it a different way. So I'm going to control Z that. And what we're going to actually do is click the rocket and the cube, and then we're going to say make compound. And this will work just fine. This will do the exact same thing. Let's go ahead and shrink that down just a little bit. Okay, so now we actually have our virtual wind tunnel. This is going to be our inlet for the air, and this will be our outlet. And then these will be the walls. Now sometimes, depending on what you're testing, these will remain open, uh, such as maybe a airplane wing or a wind turbine blade. You'll leave these as open to the environment. But for this rocket, we're going to close everything off except this and this. All right, so what do we do now? Well, let's go to the CFDOF workbench. And we're going to click this letter A. This is going to drop an analysis container. Go ahead and open it up. Let's start with our physics model. Double click it. Over here. Now, this is where things get a little tricky. If you don't know what these things are, that's okay. But I highly, highly suggest either getting to ChatGPT, Google Gemini, or finding a CFD book and looking up each one. So, for us, since this is a rocket, the most realistic would be a transient time. The flow be single phase, definitely not isothermal, definitely a high Mach number. We'll, we will be above 0 0.3 for our Mach number. We want it to be viscous. And the turbulence, definitely not laminar. You can do RANS, but I prefer DES, which is 
detached eddy simulation. So that's the one I prefer. But let's go ahead and try RANS, the Reynolds Average something, something. I don't remember what it is. Okay, that looks pretty good, so we're going to go ahead and hit OK. Let's go to Fluid Properties, double click. We are definitely dealing with air in this case, so I'm going to leave it all at standard temperature and pressure. Unless, actually, you can go look up in where you live and change these according to where you would launch this rocket. So, but I'm just going to do STP for my case, and then we're going to hit OK. And then the initial fields can't really change anything right now because I need to add boundaries. So I'm going to click this front and where the nose cone is. And we're going to click this button right here. It says fluid boundary. Now over here on the right, the boundary type is an inlet, uniform velocity. Select and model, it shows that it's face 43. Perfect. And then in the, let's go to the front view. So we have the X direction. Positive is moving into the nose cone, which is what we want. Um, I don't know if I still have the value. Nope, I don't. 454 miles per hour is what this rocket is moving at, which is 0 0.6 Mach number. So I want to say we need to get that in millimeters per second. So go ahead and Google that. Okay. Turns out it's 202,956 millimeters a second. So, where is Onzel? Okay, go ahead. There we go. I think it's put a, I just want to put a space right there. Look at that. Okay. All right. So, everything is good. I'm going to hit OK, and then it'll add the inlet right there. Okay, click on the back wall. Do the boundary layer again. This time it's going to be a outlet, static pressure, nothing else needs to change. And hit OK. Then you're going to click a wall, control, I mean, and hold control. Actually let go of control so you can rotate. Click and hold control, click the wall, let go of control. Okay, now all the walls are selected. Hit boundary condition again wall, no slip, viscous, okay, everything is good right there, all right, so we are getting closer, now we need to go back to the initialized fields, use values from boundary, the inlet for velocity, the pressure will be the outlet, and then everything else is A-OK. -okay. All right, we're getting closer and closer. Now, if we click the compound, we need to click on this button right here, CFD Mesh. OK, now click Mesh. And before we do anything over here, I'm going to hit Close. And I'm going to select Mesh again, and I'm going to click this one, Mesh Refinement. Now, go ahead and open this up, and you'll see it right here. We want surface refinement, but we want it to be reduced by 90%. So 0 0.1 is the relative size. Okay. Ah, I hate when I click there and it, see what I mean? That bothers me. Surface, 0 0.1. Okay. All right. References. Select from list. Go ahead and click the rocket. And that's why I like having the uncut solid because now I can click the rocket to mesh refine right around, right around exactly right around that rocket. Wow, it took me long enough to say that. Okay, go ahead and hit OK. Now, double click compound mesh. Base element size, we want this to be somewhat coarse. So, Hmm, I'm going to do 100 millimeters. This might be a little too large for this. If this if it airs out, try 150, but we're going to try 100 millimeters. I use CF mesh, and we're going to hit right mesh case. All right, 
says it was written successfully go ahead and hit run measure it says it started might take a few minutes might take a few seconds let's see what happens meshing complete okay perfect go ahead and hit para view this will open up a post processing thing now we haven't done any CFD we just want to look at the mesh go ahead and hit close so if you look at this we can see oh wow we have a big box and if you zoom in um, let's see if I can we can get where is it at oh okay right there there's our rocket just sitting right there you know the mesh refinement see how nice that mesh is around there okay but what if I actually want to see the rocket if you click open whoops just click on the open foam and scroll down right here uncheck internal mesh and click one of the patches and I think it's gonna be patch zero hit apply yes okay and now we can actually see the rocket um, yes it's hollow in the back but that's okay so not too bad on the meshing not too bad at all yeah not too bad Okay, so we're almost there. Go ahead and close pair view. It's not needed right now. All right, the mesh case has been run. Now double click CFD solver. Uh, mine aired out saying the task dialog box is already active. That's because I need to hit close on this. So now I'm gonna close the error report. And then double click CFD solver again. And the only thing we need to do is right here in property view go down to where it says parallel cores change it to how many cores you have now if you don't know how many cores you have do a control alt delete go to task manager okay and then go to performance and count how many you have I have eight and I have 32 gigs of RAM so this should be pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and change this to eight make sure parallel is changed to true and then go ahead and click off, but um, click back on the solver just to double check that it saved, and it did. Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to hit right, and then is there any way to minimize this? Not going to worry about that right now. Um, okay, now just hit run. and let's see how it does solver started okay now it's bringing up this is why I like this out of the way It is now doing residual so I'm gonna drag this over here and then go back to my residuals and what it's doing is now doing a lot of iterations until all of the pressure the velocity in the U I mean the velocity in the X Y and Z and the omega the k value and I forget what e is all that converges to a number now if you want to see it should be showing a report view right now hopefully on your screen mine's closed oh cuz I closed it but it should be showing some math and calculations going on letting you know that things are working so I'm gonna go ahead and put this back to there and this will take about an hour to two hours to run. So I'm just going to let it finish and then we will be back. So, I mean, not too bad to set this up pretty quick. Anyways, thank you for watching this video and we'll be right back.